I make an catch you. This is what your kidney looks like. Yes. From the outside, like beans. Your kidney resemble beans. And there are two of them, one on the left, one on the right. And this is what it looks like. When it comes to your body, anything clean up, them. Working hard, them. Filtering waste out of your blood, kidney. Removing excess water and turning into urine, kidney. Controlling your blood pressure, kidney. Balancing ions like sodium and potassium, kidney. Even have to keep your bones and your blood healthy, kidney. Now I want you to imagine out of all these things that I mentioned that your kidney just stopped working. Bam! They just stopped. What's going to happen is that the entire of your body will look like suck away pipe that block. All the waste will stay inside, water is going to build up, blood pressure is gonna go haywire. And ladies and gentlemen, that is what we call kidney disease. When the kidney cannot carry out the function that it's supposed to carry out, especially to the amount that it's supposed to carry out. And there are two main causes of kidney disease but in Nigeria, and we often ignore them. We don't pay attention to them. Number one is diabetes, high blood sugar. If your blood sugar stays high for too long, it slowly damages the blood vessels inside your kidney. So if you zoom in, pew, pew, yes, that's the sound of zooming in. If you look inside this kidney knife, this is what happens if they cut your kidney to two. You can see that there's this red thing entering the kidney. This is how blood enters the kidney. It's called the renal artery. There's also something called the renal vein. This is how blood leaves the kidney. So as blood is entering and leaving the kidney, something else is happening. Something is filtering that blood that is entering the kidney from here, keeping the waste objects, which is the waste material, now out of this place so that it cannot float as urine. You understand what I'm saying? Now, all this, all this is happening inside here. You can see all this small, small, all this red and black, red and black, red and black. They are called arterioles. When diabetes is happening for a very long time, what usually happens is that it goes there to damage these small, small vessels. As it's damaging these small, small vessels, this kidney will now no longer be able to carry out the filtration that is supposed to filter and then actually pass it out as urine. What now happens is that all the waste that is supposed to come in from here, they start to back up. They start to full. It's like go slow and just start piling up in your body. Another thing that also damages your kidneys is high blood pressure. Constant high blood pressure also puts the same force on these same small, small vessels inside your kidney. Over time, they weaken the vessels, they scar, and your kidneys start to lose power to actually clean your blood. Another thing that can actually damage your kidneys over time is abusing painkillers. When you swallow painkillers that are known as NSAIDs, a particular group of painkillers that we know as NSAIDs, for example, ibuprofen, alabucum, all those types, and even some local herbal mixtures without prescription. What it does is that it starts to stress your kidneys. As it's stressing your kidneys, it poisons your kidneys and then it stops. Another thing is not drinking enough water, dehydration, especially in this hot weather. When your body does not have enough water to work with, some of these things now get so concentrated and your kidneys actually need water to actually flush out the toxins. Under that one almost immediately is when you're dehydrated or you're taking things that can actually cause kidney stones to form in your kidneys, what can now happen is that the urine will now become so concentrated that they now start to form stones inside here. Remember that I said that all the blood enters from here, goes out from here, it filters through here, and then the urine comes out from here. If stone go and block here, what do you think will happen? There will start to be a pile up of water. That can actually damage your kidney. But before we damage the kidney, the kind of pain that that person is going to feel. Oof. Oof. There's also something called toxins. When you start to expose yourself to things like bleaching cream, battery acid drinks, contaminated water, you know, basically things that are damaging to your body, some of those toxins can actually come here and damage your kidneys. If you have a family history of kidney failure, you need to pay attention to this video. Because if kidney problems run in your family, your risk is already high. I'm not saying that if kidney problems run in your family, you are going to have it. I already said the chances of you having it, that's what risk means. The chances of you having it is actually high. All these things from one, two, three, four start to wear down the kidney bit by bit until it can no longer do its job anymore. Now, if your kidney is beginning to fail, you may not feel anything at first. But as the damage gets worse, your body now starts to show signs like swelling in the legs. They call it edema. Sometimes it will start from your legs or your extremities and then start to spread to other parts of your body as the failure gets worse. Your face, your kidneys, your eyes, everything is swelling because your body can no longer send out the excess urine or the excess water as it should anymore and it's beginning to pile up in your body. Another thing you also notice is that 
your urine is going to look like the mixed soap inside. Yes. Foam. A lot of foam. This means that protein is starting to leak from the kidney and then leak into your urine. Remember, it passes through here, comes out through here, and then the urine actually comes out through here. After that filtration, if the small, small vessels are damaged, what you notice is that proteins that are large enough start to pass through the kidney. That's what causes that foam, that plenty foam. Or you might start to notice constant tiredness because waste product is building up inside your body. It's making you feel weak all the time. Some people, you see itchy skin. Itchy skin. Why? The reason they have that itchy skin is simply because the toxins are now beginning to irritate the small, 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 small nerves under their skin and then they are beginning to itch it out. Another thing that you also notice is that the person <sighs> shortness of breath. How does that work? As the fluid is not going out, it's entering other parts of their body. Some one part it can enter is the person's lungs. Once it goes there, the person will feel like they are drowning. Now, if you notice any of these signs, don't wait, please. Get tested. Don't blame weather, don't blame stress. It's better to find kidney problems early, which is why I continue to shout that please, you people should be doing checkup as often as you can. It's very important that you do checkup as often as you can. Because if you find it early, you can actually treat it early before it actually leads to kidney failure. So what happens when somebody's kidney stops failing? There are two things that can happen. The first is dialysis. The next is transplant. Dialysis is simply a way to clean your blood when your kidneys can no longer clean it. And there are two main types. The first kind is called the hemodialysis. This is the most common one that people know. It's like artificial kidney. The work that your kidney is supposed to do, they pass your blood through a machine that will now remove all the waste and return the clean blood back to your body. Every session you do will probably last for about four hours. And some people need it about three times a week. Imagine each, each dialysis session will probably cost like 70 to 100,000 naira. So if you do three times a week, that's about how much? About 300,000. Another type of dialysis is called peritoneal dialysis. So under your belly, there's a particular, this thing called the peritoneum. It uses that, puts it inside, a special fluid is put in your abdomen, takes out all the waste, and then it's drained out. Some people would actually benefit from what you call a kidney transplant. What this simply means is that the healthy kidney from somebody is actually given or placed inside the body of a person that has kidney failure to take over the work of the bad kidney. So they remove the bad kidney and replace it with a good kidney. But I need you to understand that this actually happens or this is an option when your kidney stops working. I hope you know that sometimes even when they replace the kidneys, it does not mean that that new kidney will work automatically. There are other drugs that they have to first give you to ensure that your body accepts the new kidney. Because sometimes your body can even fight against the new kidney because it sees it as a foreign object. According to multiple reports, there are about 20,000 new cases of kidney failure recorded every year in Nigeria. But less than 2,000 of these people are doing dialysis. The question is why? It's expensive. Another thing that you also need to understand is that dialysis is scarce. Nigeria has only about 304 functional dialysis machines for over 200 million people. Many of them are stuck inside Lagos, Abuja, Portacourt, and the cities. So if Papa Emeka in the village has kidney failure, almost guaranteed to die. The specialists are few. We have less than 250 nephrologists. Those are kidney doctors in the entire country. Many of them are trained professionals, and many of them have left the country. One sad reality is that 90% of Nigeria will start dialysis, sometimes even die within 90 days. Not because treatment is bad, but because they cannot afford to continue. This disease is consistently destroying the lives of young breadwinners in their 30s and their 40s. So what can you do? Prevention. The first thing you need to do is actually check your numbers. Get your blood pressure, get your blood sugar checked regularly. And if you have diabetes or, or hypertension, control it strictly, like your life depends on it. Very important. Please stop abusing painkillers. Only take painkillers when necessary and never mix them or even take them over long periods without talking to a doctor. Drink enough water. You people will hear me say drink water, drink water, drink water. Drink water. Drink water. Your body actually needs it. Now, you need to be careful about what you eat, what you drink, what you rub on your skin, and even taking some herbal mixtures that have not been verified because it can actually affect your kidneys. Now, on a more national level, there are some things we need to do. Number one, we need more dialysis centers, oh. We need more machines. We need more investment in the healthcare system. And even health insurance that actually covers dialysis and transplants because many health insurance plans don't actually cover these. 
And a lot of people can't afford more expensive health insurance plans because right now, treatment is only for the few who can pay. Almost every time you go online, you see people who are actually crowdfunding or trying to get money to actually pay for dialysis sessions. And it's not sustainable in the long run. So I don't want you to wait for the pain or the swelling before you act. You need to start protecting your kidneys for, from today. No Nigerian should die simply because they can't afford a machine to clean their blood. Now, if you've learned something new, like this video, share it. Someone out there needs to hear it and you might probably save their lives. If you haven't subscribed, that button is looking at you waiting for your attention. Let's keep your body and your kidneys unclogged. You see what I did there? Because there are also other unclogged episodes that you probably need to watch. I'll see you in the next video.